Good evening. Welcome to the continuation of the Tuesday, September 22nd Elmhurst Board of Education meeting. The board has been in closed session since 6 o'clock this evening um, for discussion of employment of employee, negotiations, setting price for sale or lease of property owned by the district, and the approval of the August 11th and September 8th closed session minutes. Um, and the board will be returning to closed session after the meeting as well. Um, we have seven board members present, none absent this evening. Uh, can you please all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are two sections of our board meeting this evening. Um, the first is, as mandated by law, the budget public hearing, um, which we'll call to order in a second. There will be public comments uh, available for that section, of, for that hearing. And then there will also be public comments available for our regular board meeting. So we're going to call to order um, the budget public hearing. And then we will adjourn that section of the meeting and then call to order again the regular board meeting. So um, again, we have seven board members present. This is the budget public hearing, um, none absent. And I will turn it over to uh, Superintendent Moore. OK, uh, uh, Chris Walton will um, uh, report a synopsis of the key points here for you. Thank you. First, I, I just wanted to go through all of the um, documents that we have on board docs here available. The legal budget form is the first document that is um, the legal budget that will be approved tonight. Um, then we have the final rev uh, revenue budget by fund, the final expenditures bu budget by fund, a final budget summary. Um, any adjustments, budget adjustments between the tentative budget and the final budget with explanations, uh, staffing analysis, and then the PowerPoint that uh, I'll be talking about right now. But all of those are out there available. Um, so can we uh, go to the PowerPoint? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go through in detail all the, the changes from the tentative budget. We uh, have a list of them out there available for everyone. Um, but the, the first um, one we have here is we moved the uh, impact fees from the education fund to the operation and uh, maintenance fund. Um, that's for um, additional properties. The, the, the ones we're getting this year are mainly the new uh, construction that was the old Elmhurst Hospital by Field School. Um, and we, th it's, they, we thought it would be better to have those in the operation and maintenance fund so that um, for additional uh, maintenance or building additions, that sort of thing that might be needed uh, for the additional students um, that we're, we um, will be enrolling in our schools from those new properties. But uh, so those those impact fees are in the operations and maintenance fund and we increase those uh, the budget for those impact fees uh, we received a revised estimate from the state board of ed for general state aid so that was increased 200,000 from 2.9 million to 3.1 million and then the tiff one surplus distribution um, the tentative budget i had neglected to budget for the hundred thousand dollars that we hadn't received from the city yet for um, uh, TIF 1 surplus distribution. On the expenditure side, we, we do a lot of it. The tentative budget, we have a lot of estimates in there um, before we get the staffing finalized. So the salaries and benefits are just uh, updated with more current, accurate uh, information. And then we had some um, revised amounts for purchase services. Um, and supply budgets. So just minor adjustments that we made between the tentative and the final. 
David, could you go to the revenues? Yes. So um, I just want to talk a little bit about the mix of our operating uh, revenues. Um, we receive 90%, 90.44% of our local, of our revenues um, from the local funds. So that line there, 101,697,880 of the 112,444,000 is 90% of our revenues in local. And the, um, the biggest source of our revenue there is property taxes, 94,717,100 in our operating funds. That's 84.23% um, of our total operating budget is property taxes. In the uh, state revenues, um, we, we receive, as I said earlier, general state aid is 3.1 million. Um, and the other, and then special ed and transportation are categorical grants, and those are 3.8 million. So between general state aid and mandated categoricals is 6.9 million. I just point that out because um, when we talk about when Senate Bill 1 came up, those are the lines that, um, that are talked about when, they're, when Senate Bill 1 is being discussed is the, the uh, general state aid 3.1 and then the special education 2,791,250 there and then the regular and special ed transportation. And then so the state funding 7,220,000 that is 6.42% of total operating budget. And then the federal grants represent 3.14%. And if you look at the federal grants, uh, most of it is IDEA funding. Um, that's 1.5 million. Title I is 500,000. And then the national school lunch is 620,000. So I just wanted to make sure we went over the, the mix of revenues. If you could go back to the PowerPoint. That just and this slide just compares uh, the state average, which has local being 66 percent, federal 7.9, state 26.1, where our mix of revenues is 90.44 for local and state 6.42 and federal 3.14. And our revenues 84.23 percent is property taxes. Um, property taxes are limited to CPI increases which has averaged 2.3% over the last 10 years and 1.7% over the last five. Um, and then in the second, uh, this, in this budget, we have the second installment, the fall, fall taxes of uh, the 2014 extension, which was based on a 1.5 CPI, and the first installment of June 2016 of the 2015 extension, which is a 0.8% increase. Um, just on the mandated categoricals, um, back in, in 14, we actually received the June payment in June. That's when the state um, got all caught up. And then in 15, we received and we budgeted for three payments. So the June payment did not come in in June. It was not received until July. And so in this budget, we budgeted three payments which is a conservative estimate because it includes the last quarter from 15 and two quarters of 16. And it assumes that we will finish two quarters behind. So that's conservative uh, budgeting on the categorical payments. Um, we'll see how it ends up, but, but we have three payments in this budget. Um, on the expenditure side, um, we know that, that we're a service organization, so most of, our, most of our expenditures are in staffing. So the salaries at 63.56% of the operating budget and benefits 14.07%. So about 75% of the um, operating expenditures are related to staffing. So um, I wanted to um, put in here uh, information about the staffing which shows um, the number of employees we have ha has increased steadily over the years. Uh, but in this budget year, overall, the, staff, uh, the staffing has decreased 14.1. But in certified uh, staff, 
we had a 7.9 uh, increase in the number of certified staff. So then in our final budget summary here, um, we show 112,444,000 in operating revenues. Um, with 112,279,338 of operating expenditures, which gives us a operating surplus. It's, it's almost a break even at 164,662 um, in the operating funds. Um, in the non operating funds, we, um, we show that the, the 1.5 million expenditure there in this budget for capital projects were the maintenance projects done this past summer which they're done in the summer and then they're paid for in july july august so that 1.5 million is is spent on the projects we did this past summer the ending fund balance of 1.3 million is the projects that will be done next summer but in the revenues in the 1.4 million revenue is a 100,000 of the TIF-1 surplus distribution that we should have received back in January. We're hoping to get that in the next couple of months. And then the next, uh, in January, we should, it's projected or it was projected that we would get 1.3 million um, coming up in January. So that's the 1.4 million in revenues in the capital projects line. So uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone understood that's the summer maintenance projects that we do every summer on our uh, buildings. And then the debt service is just to pay, uh, that's just the property taxes we receive for the bonds uh, on a regular bond schedule that we receive and pay every year. So then uh, the next steps, um, we, we we talk in finance committee about and monitoring our actual to budget every month. Um, we will be working closely with PMA and PMA will be doing five-year projections so we will be sending them, um, I actually already sent them this budget. The audit will be done in December. Um, enrollment projections are based on October 1, September 30th so in October we will be doing uh, projections enrollment projections, then we also give um, PMA scattergram staffing uh, and other assumptions. Uh, then the audit re uh, report is approved in December. We have the tentative levy in November, the final levy in December. Um, then starting, we, we start working on next year's budget by, by, uh, by estimating staffing at the January 12th board meeting. And then the, the PMA then uses those staffing projections that uh, we get in January 12th, and they come out and do their PMA projections January 26th, which helps for um, the staffing for the following budget year. So um, that is it for the final budget presentation. Any questions? Chris, just just to thank you. Um, just to be clear, the capital projects fund balance is based upon us receiving a million four to surplus distributions. If that does not come in, is there? There's. It would appear that there's going to be no money for projects next summer. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we all understand that we're going to have to come up with a million or whatever is not given provided to us we're going to have to come up with in the budget or I mean these aren't discretionary they are somewhat discretionary but I mean these are maintenance projects these are fixing parking lots and chillers on roofs and things like that so that's um, a potential um, negative variance to the budget should it not happen which yes. is a pretty big hole that we would have to fill um, Frank Shu will be speaking at the October 20th um, Finance and Operations Committee discussing next summer's projects and our long-term uh, facility maintenance
plan. Um, so at that time, we could discuss that further. The, the fallback position would be the operations and maintenance fund, which um, obviously is funded by our operating and maintenance tax levy. So, and then when we talk to Frank, can we just talk about a little bit about timing and when we have to make commitments to spend right. money versus when we know whether we're going to get it or not? That would be helpful for the next meeting. Right. Thanks. This is a point of clarification. The, the money we're talking about, the the million three that we project will be paid to us in January of 2016, and the hundred thousand that uh, we were projecting was going to be paid to us in January of 15, but has not been paid is uh, a result of the 2004 intergovernmental agreement with the city where some of the properties from TIF-1 were released and then to make the city whole uh, or that the agreement was that both entities would be made whole, the city first, after they were made whole they were uh, required to declare a surplus uh, and that had always been projected to be uh, part the first piece of that surplus in 2000, the calendar year 2015 and then uh, in its entirety uh, beginning in the calendar year 2016. Uh, so that's the money that we're talking about just just for clarification. John? Um, in talking to the city uh, about these TIF uh, releases, it sounded to me like the city feels it needs to know the EAV before it can make the release. And so it would be in March when the final EAV is known when they would have the information about the release. I didn't go into it with detail, but that, that's what I was told. So maybe we can uh, track down that timing a little bit better uh, with the city on this. But I do know that an expectation that it happened in January is, is in their feeling, it's not, or it, what it was expressed to me by them was it was not uh, doable. They're saying we would, we would expect that in March of each year. Is that your Our understanding? Ex what, they, what was communicated to me is they'll have the information necessary to do the release in March when the EAV is published. Okay, so so we would get that money in our fiscal year 2016, which ends June 30th, 2016. I think we need to confirm that with the city and get an explicit statement from the city what their intention is on this. Okay. It right. is a contractual obligation. I would expect them to do it as okay as quickly as possible. All right, thank you, John. Anything else for Chris? Letting you off easy, Chris. <laughs> Thanks very, very much. Now, I don't have any public comment cards up here, but this is an opportunity for public comment specifically about this budget hearing. Is there anyone here that wants to make a public comment? Hearing none, uh, that is the end of the agenda for the public budget hearing. So given that there is nothing else on the agenda, I declare the public budget hearing adjourned. And we will now um, call to order our, uh, our originally scheduled uh, Board of Education meeting. Um, and the first thing on that uh, agenda is public comments. So is there anyone here with public comments for our regularly scheduled board meeting. Hearing none, I'll move on to approval of board meeting minutes. Uh, this is the approval of board meeting minutes from August 11th, 2015 and September 8th, 2015. Are there any uh, changes to, the, to either of those meetings minutes? Then hearing none, then uh, those, meeting, those minutes stand as submitted. Uh, next, I'll turn it over to Dr. Moyer for the superintendent's agenda. Okay, so the first item is consent agenda. So would there be a motion to approve the consent agenda then? John? I move we approve the superintendent's consent agenda. 
items A through F. Item F being approval of the consent agenda. So maybe it's A through E. Um, it's A through E. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, whatever it is, I move for approval of all items on the superintendent's consent agenda. Okay. Uh, do I hear a second? All right, moved by John, seconded by Shannon. Is there any discussion or are there any items anybody wants removed? I should have asked for that first, I apologize, um, from the superintendent's consent agenda. No items for removal, no discussion. Amy, all yours. Mr. McDonough. Yes. Mrs. Ebner. Yes. Ms. Bestido. Yes. Mrs. Stufen. Yes. Dr. Harrell. Yes. Mr. Bloom. Yes. Mr. Collins. Yes. That's seven ayes, no nays. The consent agenda passes. Next is the action items for the superintendent's agenda. Dr. Moore. Okay. The first is um, approval of the extension of the uh, use of the um, drive that runs adjacent to the Bethel Church property and Sandberg Middle School. We've been in an agreement uh, uh, with them and it is up for an extension for the next five years. Um, it is uh, a relatively routine matter, except for the fact that some maintenance on that road is due within the next two years, and we have an agreement through Frank's budgeting and the church uh, when that would take place. And that was uh, explained in the packet. Any, uh, any discussion? regarding that agreement between the school district and Bethel Church for the co-use of that driveway. John. Let me say as a former Sandberg parent, this explains a lot. <laughs> it's, it looks like a very good deal to let the, the parties share a driveway. I'm sorry, as, as a real estate attorney and a former Pan Sandberg parent, this answers a lot of questions that nobody else in the world had. Anything else? And we're we're just uh, we're just, we're approving the agreement, not the expenditure of money here. Is that correct? That's correct. I just wanted right. to make people aware that in the agreement, there's an expectation that we maintain that property, and it is up for some scheduled maintenance. But you are you are approving the extension of the agreement. That's all. Okay. So, um, can I have a motion? Thank you, Emily. I move that the Board of Education approve the driveway use and license agreement with Bethel United Church of Christ, allowing for a five-year extension. Do I hear a second? A second. Thank you. Moved by Emily, seconded by Margaret. Any further discussion? Um, then all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes. Second, uh, item B, Dr. Moyer. I'm aware of a rumor that there has been some discussions in Elmhurst regarding uh, the Madison School property and an agreement with the city, uh, an intergovernmental agreement with the city related to stormwater. And after many uh, exhaustive conversations, um, and Shannon and John were board representatives in those conversations, um, the uh, uh, board, as, as I understand it, has reached consensus that we are ready to approve that intergovernmental agreement. And so it is on the agenda for that purpose and we would need a motion to do so. I have a motion to approve the resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement between the city of Elmhurst and the school district. Emily, thank you. Oh, I am, thank you. I move that the Board of Education approve a resolution authorizing an intergovernmental agreement between the City of Elmhurst and the Elmhurst Community Unit School District 205 for the construction, operation, and maintenance of stormwater and other improvements at Madison Early Childhood Center. And a second. 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 Moved by Emily, seconded by Shannon. Any discussion? We've had a number of public sessions on this, and it seems to be attended largely by folks that are interested. 
in stormwater, and that's appropriate. They're very much interested in the result of the process. But I always made sure, after a couple uh, tries, to read the mission statement of our district at the top of the meeting before we spoke. And our mission is to meet the educational needs of all students, challenging each to his or her full potential and ensuring a foundation for future success in life to focus um, the community on what our role should be. Um, but I would always follow that out up by saying, with that said, I want to remind folks that these families affected by flooding are our families too. Many have kids in the schools and they're all taxpayers and we want to help them and be part of the solution. Um, so after discussing the intergovernmental agreement for over a year, having exchanged countless drafts of language, having structured and restructured the agreements, Discuss nuances of the language in both the public forum and more effectively with the attorneys present to help guide discussions and narrow the issues. We reached the agreement that we're considering tonight. Um, tonight, we're prepared to approve, I hope we're prepared to approve the agreement and thereby permit the city to get started on constructing its stormwater facilities on District 205 property at our Madison Early Childhood Center. And from the outset, we said that we're the trustees of our students' school property, and then we carefully manage it to try and meet the needs of all District 205 kids. And the city's agreed with us uh, with our resolution that we passed last September that these sites must continue to be used for their intended primary purpose, and that is education, with the additional benefit of stormwater improvement for the adjacent neighborhoods. Um, we believe, Shannon and I worked hard on this and in consultation with the rest of the board, and we believe that this agreement before the board meets that condition, allowing the city to use school property without paying compensation beyond the limited cost of constructing an accessible playground for our early childhood students attending Madison School. Um, the agreement uh, provides that the city will decide what stormwater facilities it needs to build, and the district will decide when, if, and to what extent the district needs the property to be returned to its primary educational usage. Beyond that, the city will bear all costs, all liabilities, and all risks, including the risk of the school board determining to restore the property to its educational purpose. And most importantly to some of us here on the board, the city will ensure that any unsafe condition on school property is addressed immediately and completely. So with the document signed, the city says that it'll have final design completed in three to six months and the project built in another three to six months. So we should get this agreement signed, let the city get their shovels in the ground, do what was promised to our residents and taxpayers and turn our attention back to where it belongs on education. Thank you. Very well said. Thank you, John. Anything else? Go ahead. Yeah, I agree. I agree with what you said. And, and I wanted to reiterate <clears throat> that uh, the school district owns the property. So we did not compromise that and, and have can we didn't hamper any the, uh, this board or any future board. We did not hamper them to be able to make choices about the use of that land. So for now, we thought we can be good partners and share the land and and still maintain an agreement that gives us maximum flexibility. This has been a process that's mm -hmm. taken quite a while and hundreds of hours put in. So let me say thank you to John and Shannon for the effort you put in to, uh, to bring this agreement forward. Thank you very much for all of your time. Chris, comment? Yeah, and I think I wrote some of this down so as not to go too far out of bounds. Um, 
So if I, if, I, if I reiterate some of what you said, John, I apologize, but it was good to get that. Um, first, you know, thank you to you and Shannon for your patience and time in getting us to this point. Um, I, I think just ahead of voting on this, I, I, I just this has been an issue that's been discussed in many different forums in this town for a while, and I think it's only appropriate to acknowledge the feedback. I know I've received, I know everyone's received feedback. Um, I mean, I've heard from people expressing support and a desire to help the homeowners impacted by the flooding. There were people asking us to speed up the process. There were others asking us to make sure we make a fair deal while protecting the kids. I've heard from folks calling, asking us to stop the city's plans, arguing that it doesn't solve the problem. It's too expensive for the number of homes impacted. It will take taxpayer money that otherwise could be used for new schools. So I recognize that there are two sides to this. Um, I've even had a couple of people suggest we force a referendum to make sure the entire community has a chance to weigh in. But again, in light of this, and I think John sum summarized this the best, um, the context for my decision-making process really started with, first and foremost, we've been entrusted by the community with the education of our kids. This is our mission. And, and as such, the lens that I bring to this as we look at this um, with respect to the project is our obligation to ensure the safety of the kids, to avoid incremental costs that would take money from the classroom, to maintain the usability of the facilities for our children and programs, to maintain the ownership of the property and the flexibility to reclaim the land for legitimate district needs, and to indemnify the district from any liability. And as we move forward, I want to make sure that, that everybody understands that you know, there, are not, there are additional steps in this process and we welcome feedback and your concerns with respect to these issues. Um, but I do think, in contrast, I don't believe it's our job to evaluate the city's broader plan, its costs, or how much they're going to raise our property taxes to pay for it. Um, the city council and the mayor were elected to do this and are accountable to the community for this portion of the plan. I would encourage anyone who has feedback and concerns about these aspects of this to contact their alderman and or the mayor. Um, that said, I do believe we have an obligation to point out to the taxpayer that District 205 has significant facilities needs and the community and the city should please take this into account when considering what the property taxpayer can afford to fund. But in summary, I do believe that this agreement adequately addresses District 205's key obligations as an educational institution. And for that reason, I, I will support the IGA and look forward to returning to talking about education at the board table. Emily. Um, I don't have too much to add, just that, um, you know, I'm glad that we are finally taking a vote on this. I think we haven't always agreed on the best approach to this, you know, um, that the city approached us with, but uh, I think we all agree that this is not why we ran for school board. And, um, you know, I think Everyone up here takes their job very seriously as stewards of tax dollars and, um, you know, to try to provide the best education possible for children. And um, I thank you guys all for your time, especially Shannon and John and Jim. I know you were a pinch hitter at a couple of meetings, so thank you. Um, and that's all. As were you, Emily. Thank you. All right. Um, then... Um, this does not require a voice vote, does it? Does it require a roll call vote? No, we're not spending money. Okay. No. All right, then Amy. Yeah, better safe than sorry. Amy will call upon your services here. Ms. Bastido. Yes. Mrs. Abner. Yes. Mr. Bloom. Yay. Mrs. Stufan? Yes. Dr. Harrell? Yes. Mr. McDonough? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. That's seven ayes, no nays. That motion passes. Next on the agenda is the approval of, revolution, of resolution <laughs> adopting the budget for fiscal year 2015 2016. Clearly, here we are spending money. Uh, can I have a motion, please? Uh, Emily. I move that the Board of Education adopt the budget for the fiscal year 2015-16 as recommended and that the President and Secretary be authorized to enact the resolution and certificate of authorization. I'll second. Thank you. Moved by Emily, seconded by John. Any discussion?
had a pretty yeah we had a pretty thorough discussion earlier john if you have something to add please no i just want to say this was the result of a lot of hard work thank you very much to all who participated thank you the documentation provided to us was extremely thorough thank you uh the explanation was clear and um you know through our committee process this this is a year-round budgeting process so thank you for everyone involved uh, with that, Amy? Ms. Bestido? Yes. Mr. McDonough? Yes. Mrs. Abner? Yes. Dr. Harrell? Yes. Mrs. Stufen? Yes. Mr. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. That's seven eyes, no nays. The budget is passed. <clears throat> um, next is the approval of District Management Council proposal for middle school study. Can I have a motion and then we can have some discussion? Karen? I move that the Board of Education approve the District Management Council proposal to improve programming for students and increase academic return on investment at a cost of $75,000 per year for, for three years. I'd like to add middle school yes, student. Thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Second? A second? Move, moved by Karen, seconded by Margaret. Any discussion? I think we'd be well yeah we'd be well off to to start with just a quick overview by dr moore there's been a joint uh, uh agreement uh between um and among a, a variety of of levels of this organization teachers administrators board members primarily that we need to take a look at our middle school operations in terms of our things related to staffing patterns, things related to curricular offerings, enrichments and uh, in interventions and enrichments, um, uh, minutes of instruction, um, consistency among the three sites in terms of our programming. Um, there, there have been, uh, and, and this has been an ongoing thing that, that uh, at least my understanding is this is not a new conversation, but it has risen to the fore lately for a variety of reasons um, in, in that we are at, you know, we want to analyze our improvement initiatives. We want to take a look at our resource allocation, all of those types of things that, that we talk about regularly. And cabinet believed that, that this was the best place for us to start in terms of some um, immediate, potential immediate uh, adjustments in next year uh, in terms of our operations at, at the middle school level. So we did join based on some conversations that we had with the board uh, and, and its um, interest in the concept of academic return on investment. We uh, joined an organization called the District Management Council and uh, the whole philosophy that they have is that uh, we are in an era of increasing uh, demands for improving achievement with uh, uh, increasingly complex issues in our society that affect our, our, our children uh, and a variety of different other societal things related to resources such as aging demographics, economic stagnation, et cetera, to where we have um, the likelihood of no uh, uh, expectation for new money into a system that is experiencing increasing demands. So how do you look at your operation uh, with those competing factors at stake? This organization has consulted with school districts uh, around the country of all types and um, uh, in a variety of ways and has, has uh, demonstra successfully demonstrated um, an ability to, to do what its core mission is, which is to I improve achievement, improve instruction, um, improve schedules, get efficiencies, and do things where you can, don't put things into an either-or conversation, but you get creative through some intelligent analysis, and you get both improvement and efficiencies. And so it's our recommendation that this outside lens would be an appropriate way to make sure that we get the best results possible as we embark on this. And we feel that this organization uh, is the best available option for us to do that. Um, 
The uh, intent is that they would not just come in and do a study and give us recommendations, but also work with us during the implementation uh, to partner with us and our faculty uh, and the people on an internal committee to help make those uh, the implementation of, of whatever plans we put forward uh, successful so we actually uh, uh, see the results the, that, um, that we hope to get and um, uh, have, the, have this work actually come to fruition um, as opposed to perhaps um, having a, you know, several good ideas just remain dormant and not actually get implemented. So that's, that's an overview. Um, there, there are you know, some more specific examples of the um, districts that the organization has worked with. But I would say this, the, the five areas that they uh, uh, intend to look at would be uh, codify the school's priorities and theory of action for serving students, review each school's program offering, use of time and schedules, review supports and services for struggling and gifted students, review the cost effectiveness of staffing patterns and practices, create and help implement a phased over plan for continuous improvement. So that is the proposal that you are being asked to approve. Can I just start the questions with, can you give us a little background on who the District Management Council is and what their qualifications are? Uh, the District Management Council, the CEO of District Management Council is, um, uh, works out of Harvard University and um, is a co-chair and core faculty member of the Harvard University Public Education Leadership Project, which is a joint project between the Harvard Graduate School of Education and the Harvard Business School. So these people are a combination of uh, educational um, uh, people with expertise in education, public policy, economics. It's an it's a, it's a eclectic mix of people that uh, have come together around the um, uh, uh, concept of the importance of public schools in this country. Uh, so they have a shared value. It's, it's not, it's not a, an ideological think tank. It's not, a, it's, it's not solely um, a, uh, uh, an institution that comes from one point of view or another. It, it uses the expertise of a variety of people to work with school districts with the value of uh, the importance of strong public schools in this country. Have they done work in Illinois or are they exclusive in East Coast institutions? No, they do work with, uh, they do work with districts all over the country. The districts that are members of the organization that I'm aware of in Illinois are Indian Prairie, Elgin, Rockford, Moline, um, hopefully us. But those are, the, those are the ones that I know of. That doesn't mean there might not be some others. But um, there, are, there are many in Minnesota, uh, some in Wisconsin, Texas, West Coast, um, um, all over the country, all different sizes. Um, so it, it um, well, its home base is Boston. It is not a regional organization by any means. Karen, thank you for your patience, by the way. Absolutely, no, thanks for setting the stage. Um, and, and just a little bit more about setting the stage. I know that it's been, what, over nine years since I was a parent with a middle school, and I know that these things were being discussed that long ago. And I know that we as a board, since we've been on the board, that we've been engaged in these conversations with, um, you know, the district in various different forms at all levels. And so um, I look forward um, to a very positive and productive collaboration within the district um, with all of the employee groups, um, and th not only through the receiving the recommendations with open openness, but working through all the way to implementation and, and seeing the results. Um, so that that's I'm really looking forward to having this process put in place, um, and for us to be doing it in parallel with the community engagement process, so that we can continue to get that community input um, along with it. And I know that this organization, um, you know, can link with that. So I like the fact that they have looked across the nation, that they um, have proven best practices that they can bring to us with all that data um, that is proven. 
And so I thank you for doing the research and bringing these things to us so that we can finally get started. Margaret, go ahead. Yeah. Again, also just um, voicing my support, if we're taking a, a, a look at this, what we're doing, we're bringing together, we've got an external piece, an external objective viewpoint, we've got internal um, staff, um, looking at this process and we also have the opportunity for community engagement so for me when we're putting together a process we have a perfectly balanced opportunity with the three key segments being representative and sharing information to move forward for a perfect platform and I think this is this is a great opportunity to move forward with that anyone else well, one one thing I'll add to that is Whenever I hear consultant, I cringe, uh, and I think, why? Why are we spending money on a consultant? And then you cut. You, you have to grip the reality that there are only seven unit districts in Illinois that spend less per pupil on administrative costs than District 205 does. So, first of all, we just don't have the staff to take on a project like this. Second of all, I think Margaret summed it up eloquently that. This is a group that brings a unique perspective with unique capabilities and a proven track record of success to our district. And I expect them to be su as successful here as they haven't been in other places. So that's my perspective. Anything else? Should we bring it to a vote? Amy? Mrs. Stufen? Yes. Dr. Harrell? Yes. Mr. McDonough? Yes. Mrs. Ebner? Yes. Ms. Bastido? Yes. Mr. Bloom? Yay. Mr. Collins? Yes. That's seven ayes or, or yeas, as the case may be. No noes, that motion passes. And, um, or no nays, as the case may be. Thank you. Um, one item left on the superintendent's uh, action items and that is approval of BWP and Associates to conduct a York High School principal search. So could I have a motion, please? Emily. I move that the Board of Education approve the contract with BWP and Associates to facilitate the search for the next York High School principal at a cost of $11,900 plus expenses. Second. A second. Thank you. Moved by Emily, seconded by Margaret. Um, any discussion? Do we need to state any background here just to be clear? And highlight a little bit of the process? Go right ahead. Or, or, or we'll turn it over to Dr. Moyer to do that. Perfect. Um, <clears throat> the goal would be to post a position immediately and uh, a time frame has been established that would allow for approval at the December 15th board meeting barring any unforeseen complications um, based on advice that we've gotten about um, the fact that a, a large suburban high school like this is a, is a unique position and um, the pool of candidates that likely would be available for uh, that type of a position it was recommended that the search be conducted sooner rather than later. Uh, the proposed plan includes um, uh, significant involvement of uh, all aspects of the community uh, from um, uh, some focus group um, uh, input on the front end to uh, involvement on interviewing committees on the back end. Um, so I, I believe that uh, uh, it's been a, a thoughtful um, plan that, that, that we've worked through, um, and we believe that the timeline is manageable, um, and, and we, would, uh, we would, as I said, post a position immediately, and there would be some intermediate steps through the screening of candidates and all those kinds of things that, that are rather, you know, relatively typical to a search, but... Um, uh, I think it, it's important to note that there um, are plans in place for uh, involvement from uh, a, a wide variety of people in, in, is included in this, uh, in, in the plan moving forward. Any discussion? Margaret? 
just obviously one note um, that Mrs. Smith has um, notified the district of her intention to retire at the end of this 215-216 year, which is why we're moving forward with this um, move to replace our principal. If I can add to that, Margaret, um, Diana Smith came to us, if I remember correctly, two and a half years ago with and, and told the board that her, her intention to retire at the end of this school year. Um, and the, the board agreed to that. And um, you know, we, we left the communications in, in Ms. Smith's hands. And uh, you know, we've issued recently a uh, press release telling the community, I think she let uh, her staff know several years ago, uh, as, as well as the parents at York, uh, of her intention. So this, this is, should not come as a surprise to anybody. Um, and the reason that we're hiring a search firm is this is a very special position in our district. Um, and we want to ensure that we not only post a position and see who applies, but we want to hire a firm to go out and proactively recruit the best possible candidates for this position. And, and that's what we're doing. We're not spending very much money to do it. Uh, and I think we'll get a, uh, a huge return on our investment to uh, hire BWP. Um, so with that, any other comments? All right, hearing none, Amy? Ms. Bastido? Yes. Dr. Harrell? Yes. Mr. McDonough? Yes. Mrs. Stufen? Yes. Mr. Bloom? Yay. Mrs. Ebner? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes, that is seven yeses and yeas, no noes, that motion passes. Um, next on our agenda is the Superintendent's Communication uh, Freedom of Information Act requests. Yes, there were five. One requesting emails and documents regarding a specific topic, which was denied. One requesting information regarding student discipline, which was partially granted, partially denied. One requesting information regarding non-certified support staff, which was granted. One requesting information regarding staff, which was granted. One requesting information about adopted math and science textbooks in the district, which was granted. I also left with you um, a copy of an article from the Illinois School Board Journal on uh, dual language immersion programs that I thought you might find interesting um, I know you get that publication, but um, in the event you skimmed over it or whatever, I thought that this had some information that you might um, want to uh, uh, make sure you take a look at. It's, it's uh, I think, a pretty well done article. Thank you. Any questions? Next on our agenda is board communications. I have a couple of things, but if somebody wants to, somebody else has other things. All right. Um, item number one is tomorrow we're going to refinance some more bonds. Uh, originally, we had um, we had planned to do it last week, but William Blair came to us last week and said, "Why don't we uh, wait for the uh, Fed to decide what they were going to do with interest rates?" Uh, that turned out to be a very good call. We agreed to wait till this week. Since then, the yield on the ten-year note has uh, dropped from 2.33% uh, to 2.24% two, two, 2 when I left the office today. So uh, because, of, because we waited another week, uh, our refinancing costs should be lower. Um, and um, this will be not our final leg, but our next to final leg of our refinancing. And we will have, uh, if all things go as planned, we will have saved our taxpayers just under $15 million as of tomorrow um, over the life of these bonds. Uh, and that is, as I point out, something that comes directly off of uh, property tax bills, not money that comes back to the school district to be redeployed. Um, the second thing I want to remind everyone, and uh, just repeat what we said last May. Last May, we were in the middle of a superintendent search. Uh, we wanted stability. Um, but the law calls us to elect officers uh, in May. So uh, what we agreed is that uh, I would serve on for another six months, and uh, then I would resign. Shannon would take over as president, and we had talked about swapping uh, positions. 
Uh, so first of all, I want to say that uh, at board communications in our next meeting, I'm going to resign as president. So that's not headline stuff. We've all talked about it since last May. Um, and it's all pre-planned. However, the way I read our, our bylaws, we need an election for vice president. So if there is anyone interested in being vice president, uh, I will do whatever the board wants me to do. Um, I am not tied to the idea of being vice president. We have plenty of, we have six other people, well, f excluding Shannon, five other people that that leaves uh, that are more than qualified to be uh, officers of uh, the school board. And if anyone has interest, I, I recommend that you contact Shannon. And um, I, I think that would probably be the best, the best way to do it, uh, the most orderly way. So um, uh, with that, um, are there any other uh, are there any other board communications, Margaret? I just thought of one. The um, District Two Hundred Five Foundation um, has a variety of different meetings that they propose with uh, different community members, and they have asked that if at all possible there be a board representative at the meetings um, where they go to these different um, community groups. If anyone is interested, um, the first meeting is October 28th. If, um, if there's someone that's interested in attending that October 28th meeting, it will be great. If there's, I will also, I can attend if someone else isn't interested. And then just be aware that there will be at least two other meetings throughout the year um, where there's no requirement. It's just a way for the foundation and the board to be aware of what's, what each other is doing. So we're trying to increase communication and collaboration. So, Questions, I'm sorry. So just to clarify, this would be, you know, we, we have a board rep to each of our schools. This would kind of be a board rep to the, to the foundation. Yes, that's okay. a great way to put it. Okay. Yeah. Karen? And you have been serving that role, f have you? I have, I have not done anything. I'm just saying there were a conversation about it, and I'm saying I will step into that role if, if desired. If not, if anyone else wants to do that, I'm just letting people know that the first meeting would be October 28th, and I think there's a couple other scheduled for the year. So I'm just stating the desire for the okay. foundation. Margaret, would it be preferable if we left it as if a board member has interest in participating, taking, taking that role to contact you? That would be perfect. Great. Okay. Emily. Uh, well, it's kind of anticlimactic, but since this is your last meeting as board president, I just want to say thank you very much. How long have you been in this role? Has it been? I think it's three and a half years. Now, I, I, I think, I mean, if, well, I don't know. We should talk about it. If I resign at board communications or if I resign at the beginning of the meeting, oh, so there you, might okay, be one so more. Okay, so we may still have you, you, you may have to. You may have to suffer through one I'll more. I'll save my emotional speech for next yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you might want to hire some speech writers. You, you got one more meeting to get through. <laughs> Do you want me to set some Kleenex out over there for you, yeah. too, for, for next time? I think the whole room's going to need some, so yeah. just kind of spread it. Yeah, for the collective sigh of relief. So, all right. Anything else? <laughs> That's right. All right. Um, then we have upcoming meetings. Tuesday, October 13th is that meeting where I'm going to resign. Uh, it's held at 730 in this, in this room. Um, Monday, October 19th is the Teaching and Learning Committee, or Learning and Teaching Committee, I'm sorry, at 7 p.m. in these rooms. Tuesday, October 20th, is the Finance and Operations Committee meeting at 7 p.m. That seems to be a trend, 7 p.m. It used to be 6.30. 7 it is. All right. Uh, and then Tuesday, October 27th, is our next, uh, I'm sorry, is two regularly scheduled Board of Education meetings away. Um, and that, again, is at 7.30 in these rooms. Now, uh, I don't have anything left on the agenda. So, this meeting? Oh, wait. Go ahead. I move that we go back into closed session for the purposes of discussing negotiations. I didn't write myself a note. I'm sorry, Action. everybody. Employment of employee. Okay. Employment of employee. I'll second the motion. All right. All right. Emily, thank you. Moved by Emily, seconded by Karen. 
Amy, we need a roll call vote. Ms. Bastido? Yes. Mrs. Stufen? Yes. Dr. Harrell? Yes. Mr. McDonough? Yes. Mrs. Ebner? Yes. Mr. Bloom? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. That's seven ayes, no nays, and there will be no action uh, coming out of closed session, so no need to stick around. Thank you.